Yeah, I'm, I'm going to an event tomorrow with uh, at Steve Gagg's house um, with one of the mayor, mayoral candidates, so. I'll give him my best. I, I, I didn't realize you guys knew each other. I will totally, he's a really nice man. Liz, would you please give us a high five when you think it's a good time to um, to start? Okay. Thanks. Hey, hey, Michael. Um, um, Jim Edwards asked me for the updated Mount Wollaston stuff, but I, I guess I'll send them this stuff that I brought to the meeting on Monday. You wanted electronic versions, is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. I'll just some and say, look, this is we haven't updated the stuff yet based on Craig's drawings, but um, it was Craig's birthday today, seventy-seven. If you can imagine that, Annie. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> and uh, I had a nice conversation with Peter last night. I should oh, tell. Good. Him. Yeah, he's hanging in there. <laughs> it's so cute look at the little the little kids are adorable <laughs> he's really pumped about the new park so he he wanted to come watch <laughs> Annie, that's great Yeah, those those are our users. So great, right? Those are exactly that's our those are our those are customers. Those are our customers, those are our customers right? Exactly. <laughs> oh my god, those are I think these are ways. I have a two to five. I mean, I think do we have a two year old there, or are they? How old are they? Uh, almost one. She can speak for herself, I guess. Almost one and uh, four. Excellent. Oh. We live at uh, Eustis Street, right down, right down the road from here. Down towards the community garden. Oh, we got raised hand. Got it. So um, I think we might as well get started. My name is Annie Blair. I'm the project manager with Boston Parks and Recreation. And um, I'm hoping that other people will be joining us tonight. But in any case, thank you for giving us your time and insights. And um, if we can go to the next slide, I'm gonna get some business out of the way. 
So we're going to be recording this um, and then it'll be posted on the um, website for the project. But if you don't want to be recorded, you can just turn off your microphone and camera. And then next, thanks. So th at the first meeting, we did it with the webinar format, but it seemed that people were a little bit surprised at not being able to see each other. So um, here are some tips about how to participate. <clears throat> And what you can do if you're using a phone, you can do star nine to raise your hand and ask for audio or video permission to ask questions or provide comments. And then if you're um, participating via the web, you can use the chat function to ask questions or comments and provide responses. So you raise your hand via web to ask for audio or video permission to um, ask questions or provide comments. Um, the agenda for tonight is gonna be introducing project team, the project overview, presentation of design concepts on, and alternatives. And then we would love your responses to what you like, what you think works and what you think doesn't work. Um, and then, closing remarks and next steps. So, so far in the process, we've had our first meeting that was really a listening meeting and then a drop-in session last Friday after finally the weather cooperated and we didn't risk getting soaked or struck by lightning. Um, and both of those get togethers were very instructive. So we've taken um, what we heard and have used that to inform different potential solutions. So as I said, I'm Annie Blair. Um, I'm in the Parks Department. Christine Brandeo is the Outreach Coordinator um, for the Parks Department. We're very lucky to have Liz Sullivan with us tonight. She's Director of External Affairs and Marketing, and she's um, stepping in for Christine tonight. Jay Sean Gant is with the Office of Neighborhood Services, and he's been very helpful. Um, so the design team is Ricardo Ostrich and Michael Clutchman from BSC Group. Um, they're both landscape architects, and um, they'll be doing the bulk of the presentation. <clears throat> So the schedule is that we had our first kickoff meeting um, in May, and then um, the meeting tonight with the drop-in session at the playground itself last week. Then we'll have the third meeting in the fall, and the third meeting will show a preferred design where we'll take your comments from the first two meetings and put them together. Um, so what you're gonna to see tonight with the three alternatives means that we wanna hear what you think what works and what doesn't, but we don't have to, we can sort of mix and match the solutions for the best, um, best proposal. And then over the fall and winter, we'll develop the design further based on your comments and the detailed design and then um, have it go out to bid in the winter time, which is the best time for getting prices. And then spring of 2022 is when construction will start. And we're hoping that um, it will be complete in the fall of 2022. We are understanding that as a sort of a result of COVID, Building materials are in short supply and costs are rising and lead times are increasing. So we'll try our best um, to get the park opening in the fall, um, but just know that that's the current situation. And um, what comes into play in determining what the best solution is, 
is the city of Boston has a series of initiatives around things like sustainability and um, accessibility and inclusion. We also have safety guidelines. Um, there are very detailed safety guidelines around play equipment and we have environmental, environmental regulations that we need to meet. Then Parks and Recreation has its own set of goals um, about things that are kind of a finer grain than the city of Boston initiatives, but again, address maintainability, um, equity, accessibility, and safety. And then community input is another huge part of this. So, Again, we're very thankful for your time tonight and your, um, your thoughts. And, you know, we bring our professional expertise to these projects, but we don't know the parks in the same way that the residents and regular users do. So we really rely on you for sort of our inside information. So as I was speaking about earlier, the city of Boston's overall um, goals are around access, equity, climate resiliency, health. And I think that building community is one of the most important things. And as we're emerging from the isolation of COVID, um, I think it's become clear that that community building is more important than ever. And the park and recreation goals are again, accessible and available to people of all um, ages and all abilities, diverse, balanced and efficient mix of uses, um, meaningful community engagement, adaptive and resilient landscapes and promoting connections. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ricardo who's gonna talk some of that context and then Michael will um, take us through the alternatives. Hi everyone, um, thank you for joining us tonight um, on this important project in a community that really um, um, is very anxious to see great improvements at, to this uh, wonderful little park. Um, I'm the, I'm the land, manager of landscape architecture for the BSC group, uh, we're based in Boston and uh, Michael has been the, the lead designer and working with this, but I was at the community uh, listening session and I've been participating in the community participation uh, events that have taken place regarding this park. Um, you know, the park is in an interesting crossroads because it is um, in part of a larger green space and it's part of the sort of the orchard gardens uh, development uh, that Edna Bino had a great deal of uh, hand in sort of improving. Um, to the, to the north are the Orchard Garden Schools, the Boys and Girls Club, and those are very important key users of, uh, of, this, um, of this space, uh, as well as the, the folks in the neighborhood. Um, they're then more adjacent parks, a little further afield is the Clifford Playground to the east and to the northwest, Ramsey Park. Um, other sort of considerations that are really important is that the Melnia Cass Boulevard is to the north and, and Dudley Street is um, also kind of to the west. Um, and those um, um, both present uh, opportunities and challenges in terms of um, the things that occur at the park and the things that need to be, we need to be mindful as designers. Um, uh, and with that, I'd like to hand it off to Michael Plutchman to kind of describe uh, what we've been working on uh, since uh, our first meeting um, last June. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, thank you everybody who's here tonight. And also I, I know that this recording will um, be seen by folks. So I just want to um, say thank you to the people who will see this later on. So as Ricardo said, this is, this is where the playground is in, in this area of the city. To get a little closer, this is material we did show um, at the first meeting, but we just wanted to refresh people's memories. Um, so here we are at the current playground, Orchard Park School is off to the left. It's a little twisted from the view before. 
uh, the, the playground with the equipment is in the purple area. Um, the fenced-in area also includes the, the water spray area and the existing sand play area, all within this existing fence. Outside of it are some long green spaces, the uh, paved pedestrian circulation, and water fountain adjacent to the rest of the park. Um, the entrances, the main entrance is off of Adams Street, which is the larger gate, but also there's the corner entrance um, off of the corner of Adams and Du Bois Street. And again, we'll go through these quickly, we did show them before, but um, existing site conditions, the playground, you know, it, it's time for a refresh, it needs some attention. Um, existing uh, entrance here with the, the older playground equipment. Um, bottom left is the existing water play area, which again has seen better days and um, a view of the existing swings, which we know are one popular item that we just want to make sure good uh, replacements come in for. Uh, some things just to think about as we're looking at new things is right now there's a combination of surfaces in the playground. Um, it's not what we would call fully accessible. So the new layout and equipment and surfacing would be um, the goal to be an accessible, um, universally accessible playground to all abilities. Um, there's things in the park like this wall, which don't really lend themselves to play or safety, which we'd like to see go away. Um, is a, what we heard at the open house. Um, and then I'll just point out one of the things here is this condition at the bottom of the existing slide. You'll see when we get into the plan, um, how we outline what we call the safety fall zones around the equipment. And right now this slide is too close to this curb. So there'll be some safety improvements options that we'll be showing you as well. Uh, point out a couple other things. The uh, Boston Parks is going away from uh, sand play areas. Um, so this will be, there'll be some other options about what can happen here instead of the, the sand play for, for health and safety reasons. All right, so I'm throwing up one plan, but I just wanted to let everybody know that there'll be three concept plans or option layouts we show you tonight. Um, each one will have sort of a selection of different equipment to look at, um, but that doesn't mean, you know, you're stuck with one set of equipments that go with one layout. These are just ways of showing you the different kinds of things that can happen for a new playground. Um, you know, one piece of equipment could be in a different option, the layouts can shift, um, but some consistent things you'll see in all of the plans tonight are, um, we are preserving all of the existing shade tree except for the one uh, dead tree. Um, also, I'll point out on this option, these dashed lines that go around, like this is a set of swings looking from above, but this dashed outline is that safety zone. So that means that there can be no other equipment or walls or trees within that zone. Um, it does, of course, limit the amount of equipment we can actually fit in the space. Um, so it's something to pay attention to. As you can see, swings, because they move, take a lot of space, but we wanna make sure that they fit in there. Um, so now I'll describe uh, this concept and then afterwards, I'll show you some pictures of what, what this equipment is that the little diagrams from above are showing. Um, and then we'll look at the next two concepts. But um, if any point, you know, at the end, we'll review all three of them. We can always go back and look at them. Um, and these will be on the recording. So I just, you'll have more than one chance to sort of think about this as we go forward. Um, we can come back and, and look at the differences. So in concept one, one thing that's unique about it is this concept keeps the current fence line. We may repair the fence and gates, but everything fits within the current playground fence. 
Um, what's different about the current layout is um, we've moved the splash pad water play area um, up, up above the central pathway. It's down here right now. This lets um, us pair together a two to five year old play structure along with toddler swings. So there's a separation in age groups. So this bottom half of the park really is dedicated to the younger kids and the upper part is older kids and the spray pad and there in the middle is, is for both. It doesn't mean, you know, kids can't circulate around, but it is, it does separate the groups a little. Um, we're preserving the tree in the center that have to be some kind of um, curb or something to protect it, but the surfacing can go fairly close to it. Um, what you're seeing with these zigzag pieces we'll show you are some benches with um, armrest handles that allow people to get up that have a hard time getting up, but also um, prevent people using these to sleep on and other things. So there's a real reason for those handles. Um, in addition, there's some more traditional benches in this option. Uh, as I said, this is a play structure for two to five year olds, toddler swings, a larger play structure for older children and larger swings. So that's what fits within the existing fence line. Let me show you some of the equipment. So this is the fun stuff. Um, so the top one is two to five uh, play structure. You can climb up these things, or this is a little harder climbing if you're a little older. There's two slides to go down, downside, but this is a smaller scale structure um, that accommodates your kids. There's a little more challenging with little bars to try to get across and some challenges for, but again, this is a lower scale thing. So it may, it may look huge, but this is a smaller scale one size to two to five. In addition, there's some interactive play stuff. These are sound uh, drum that are hanging off here to make uh, some play and a little roller. So there's some interactive parts to this equipment. Uh, so that would be at the, towards the bottom of the playground and another area with the larger uh, play structure, which again is, is taller, um, climb up higher, there's two, two slides so kids can go down together, uh, racing or holding hands, whatever. Um, in addition, these cable climbers are more challenging along with sort of a climbing wall structure. Um, and nothing set in stones, they're just one version of, of options to sort of see what people like or don't like. In the same option, we're talking about toddler swings. This is one version of how we can organize toddler swings on a single post. Um, and to the right are like a, a swings for, for older kids with the, the strap seats. Um, also still, what we're showing in plan is a um, new spray pad area that um, right now the, the water comes out of those two older units, but the, the more sort of fun and way to go is to have water jets that come right out of the ground and those can be orchestrated into different patterns and um, foot activated also by having the features and the activators in the ground, there's a lot less maintenance for things that could be broken or vandalized. Um, we talked about uh, benches with, with handles. So they can just be the handles or there can be options like this where a bench actually gets put on those walls um, as, as seats that sit on top of the walls. Um, this is a more traditional bench. Um, I'll point out that a final version of this would likely have a center hand rest as well. The reason being that that helps one with disabilities get up, but also, as I said, discourages people from using this as, as a bed to, to sleep on. Okay, so that's, I said, we can, we can go back. I know it's a lot to this. I also will say that option one was sort of a more traditional um, set of equipment and layout. Um, so concept two, um, and the, what's in here is 
Along Adams Street, it's the same kind of fence line. But what we did is we expanded the fenced in area with this curve to get more larger equipment in the same playground. Now, when it comes to the final design, we'll have to balance the budget, what everything costs, as, as Annie was saying, materials have gotten expensive um, with, with the options, but we felt it's reasonable to at least see if it's possible to maybe expand the area a little bit without really taking too much away from the rest of the park, leaving some open areas. But um, this I'll show you a picture of in one of, in one of the two last meetings, we showed an image of this it's sort of a net climber feature and um, people really liked it um, that had come to those things, but you can see it takes a lot of space. So that is something to realize that this one piece of equipment is gonna be one part of a lot of your space use and a lot of your budget. And I'll show you pictures of what the whole thing looks like, but we wanted to sh show an option with it. Um, in addition, there's a swing here, which, which folks like to, it's a large saucer swing, which allows up to four um, children to use it at once or one kid. And also the way it's set low and wide allows um, a transfer from a wheelchair. So it's also an accessible swing as well. So it does a lot. Um, in this case, our two to five, play structure is down in this corner, right across from the toddler swing. So they are together, but not isolated by a walkway. Um, this option keeps the splash pad in its, basically its current location. We've um, added a few things, um, some maybe natural boulders to climb on in the splash pad, as well as some circular benches or curved benches around the edges. So um, parents and other folks have a place to sit close to the splash pad. And Michael, there's something I should share with you that I heard from the other project managers. And that is that some people love having um, something low but climbable like boulders in the water play area. And some people think it's a crazy idea. Okay, well. We've got options with both, so we'll, 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 we'll get time to figure that out. That's interesting. Now, let's yep. talk about climbing, too. Um, and I'll show you pictures. This area in the middle, we call it mounds, what um, some playgrounds have been done more recently. So I'm saying this is a little more or less traditional. Um, the surfacing for all of this playground right now is a resilient rubberized surfacing um, throughout, but um, this doesn't mean it has to be all flat. This can actually be little hills to climb that we can create within the surfacing. So um, that, is, that is an option um, as well. And I'll show you some pictures. And then this, just, just to tell you what's in here, is the spinner. This is sort of a standalone moving uh, piece of equipment, which I'm going to show you in a second. Again, with a lot of information, but we can we can take it slowly. So this is that large net climber that we're showing. Um, and then this is it's not really a slide, but it's it's something to scoot down um, and bounce on. So if you don't want to be climbing on the the net portions that want to take a rest or play um, that is part of this equipment. And then there's this little other net piece to climb on down here. This one, you can come up inside and climb out and then climbing up and over. So there's a, um, give you a larger picture of what this one is like. Um, in this case, the two to five play structure, um, maybe compared to the last one, has a lot more platforms and walls. Again, with a little bit of interaction in the uh, things to do on the panels um, and, and some uh, shade above and things to crawl through. Um, up here on the left, that was the moving spinner. 
piece of equipment I was talking about. Again, it can be used by uh, numerous kids at once, either riding on it, moving it, but it goes around the circle and you hold on to the cables. To the right here, uh, you know, one of the brands is an oodle swing, but that's that saucer swing, which again, a number of kids can use at once, or um, as I was saying, it also can be used as a accessible um, from a wheelchair transfer uh, piece of equipment. Bottom right, toddler swings are similar. There's a different setup with instead of the single post, the last one. Um, to the bottom left here, when I was talking about the mounds and climbing, this is the kind of thing you can do with the surfacing. This is probably taller than we're thinking about in the park because we want to keep the, the view open so you can see through it. But we're talking about uh, mounds that may be from, you know, if there's three of them from two to three to four feet at, at most, but can be fun to climb up and down. Uh, top left, again, so to Annie's point here is the spray feature with some boulders to climb on. And depending on preferences, that could be um, an addition to the spray pad. Um, different types of benches, again, just to sort of see what like before we had a more traditional uh, metal bench. This one is wood with the center uh, handrail like we were talking about. This bench, I um, was just, more contemporary bench, but the version we would use, again, would have the handrails in the center handrail for, access for accessibility and also um, for, for preventing uses that aren't sitting. And again, this is a lot, so we can, um, we can go back and ask questions or people can look at this in their own time and then um, ask those questions afterwards. Um, so this is concept three, and what's we'll start with sort of the layout and the space like we did the other ones, but um, this one keeps the fence line on the, the right-hand side of the page, the east, and along the top pathway. But what we've done is move, the existing fence line is here where my cursor is, and we've moved it um, a distance towards the corner entrance. Um, and that actually allowed us to get some more space within the fence um, and a couple other uses. Um, in this one, there's some similar items to the last one. We, the, the oodle swing, the saucer swing is in this one. There's a spinner. So we'll show you it's a little different one. Um, we've moved the spray pad in this option up to the, the northeast side the, on the right here. Um, and again, paired the toddler swings with the two to five playground. Um, we've kept the existing tree as in all of them. But in this case, we've made more of a, a bench around it and then let there be a little green space for the tree to live in. Um, also, which is different, some different options that we're showing in this one are some seating areas uh, that have some tables in them besides the benches. Uh, one of the seating areas is within the fence and also has a shade structure, which we're using pictures of some um, uh, slatted trellis to, to add a little shade. Um, we've also shown a seating, some seating and table areas that are next to the playground, but outside of the fence, just because there may be um, senior citizens, other folks who may not want to be right in the fence, but nearby um, and have different uses, games and things for, for tables and chairs that are permanently there. And, you know, I'll show you some equipment and then we can, we can go back to all these options again and sort of compare. So here we have uh, different, you know, more different play structures again, paired with a, a five to 12 play structure at the top. 
um, a little more spread out. So um, similar to the first one in the, the sort of climbing and slides, but it's a little more linear. Um, and then has some of the aspects of, you know, not quite the nets, but the climbing with, with cables over here on the right and different kind of uh, climbing challenges and going through hoops here. So it's a little more of a longer journey, maybe more than that one. Um, and two different options for slides. So this is side-by-side -side slide, but also a, a twisty open, it's not a closed tube slide, but an open sort of shoot on the, on the other side, two ways to get down. Um, the two to five play structure, I happen to like this one a lot. Uh, it's similar to the first one in that they have different ways to climb, a steeper one, an easier one, um, two different slides, but it also incorporates, um, you know, some, some shade and um, different sort of places that you can sort of just feel comfortable at the top here, a little um, place place to stand. Again, same saucer swing, the toddler swing, we've seen those in other options. This is a different version of the spinner instead of being sort of the central one of the cables. This has these bars that you, you um, hang on. Um, and I think you may be able to fit more of these two of them in the same space, depending on budget as opposed to one, um, like the other ones. I think these use up a little less space. Um, spray pad, we see the different options with the with stones or without. Um, in the background here, actually, you're seeing a little bit of that sort of mounded playground surfacing. We showed these larger mounds, but here, actually showing up in this photo is that same idea. Um, here is more, we're talking about the seating around the tree. We would add the hand rest to this one as well, but this allows a little um, natural area around the tree for the tree roots. Um, the bottom here, we see tables and chairs, and we have those seating areas where I mentioned. Um, these are very uh, heavy duty tables and chairs that are anchored into the pavement. They can't be moved. And honestly, uh, from talking to, to Annie, who's worked with these in this location, actually, of the photo, she said that these things probably won't move even if they weren't anchored, but they would be anchored. Again, the chairs discourage people from, from sleeping, but also allow for um, you know, a small picnic or a game or something else reading um, for uh, adults and maybe older people who, who might be in the park as well. Um, on the left here is an example of what a shade structure would be. Um, we're, we're not proposing a sort of canvas top that would have to be maintained or a solid roof, which might encourage people to move in or stay here longer, people who should not, who it's not, uh, the space is not meant for, um, as far as wanting this to be safe and open for the neighborhood and families. Uh, having an open sun shade would really be the goal, not, not a, 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 rain, a rain cover. So finally, I said we, we would go back to the different layouts. And again, we can always go back into the presentation and get up close to stuff if, if we want to answer questions. But to review the concept one um, was within the existing fence line, um, a little more traditional selection of equipment. The spray pad moves over and the toddler swings and the two to five playground equipment go together. Um, the space is, um, there's a little bit of division by these seat walls, which add some additional seating for, for, um, for caregivers, kids, uh, families. Um, 
Option two expands the footprint of the playground, the fencing area a little bit, a little more non-traditional climber, the idea of having mounds, um, the group swing, and then the, the keeping the spray pad in the same area, but a little more um, non-traditional playground. And then the, the third one um, has a little bit of both and expands the playground, adds the different seating areas for, for a variety of ages um, and has a, the equipment is a little more mix of traditional and non-traditional equipment. Um, the spray pad, again, has moved up to this location is shown with some boulders and with some area of green around the tree. Um, all of them preserve the trees and except for the one dead tree, which would be removed. Um, so those, those are the different layout options. Again, it's a lot of information. I don't expect anybody tonight to have retained all this in one shot or listen to the recording for the first time. Um, but um, again, the recording will be there to go through and we can certainly uh, answer any questions now or, or later on that come up. Um, so I'll just I'll hand it back to, to Annie if you wanna sort of ask questions or have anything to say. Sure, well, Sammy, I hate to put you and your family on the spot. <laughs> But um, as it looks like you're the only participant right now, it would be great to hear. Um, no, actually, um, Sunja Bino is uh, also participating, right? I see you. I see your little box down there. Is that correct? Yes, I'm Edna's daughter. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I'm glad you're oh, here. Terrific. Good. Yeah, I live on Eustis Street, so. Okay. Excellent. So thank you for so we got two. You you are the two most important people tonight. <laughs> but Sammy, why don't you maybe you go first and then uh Sunja can go next. So Sammy, what did you because just Sammy has some customers with him? I don't know if you saw those, Sunja. He has some he has some children who are really want to use this thing. Uh yeah, they're floating around behind me. Uh first of all, thanks. This is really great. Um we, uh, we, we, you know, we, we had our kids home with us um, since uh, March 2020. Uh, one just started back up at, in daycare. One is still here. Uh, and, and every day at noon, we went to the Edna Bino playground. It was our break, my break, uh, because the, the day is crazy working with kids at home, as some of you may know, um, and, and their break too, to kind of get away from screen time and what have you. Uh, uh, so uh, re really cool to see this uh, happening, and they're they're very excited. Um, you know, of 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 what I saw, uh, and this is largely informed by my son Naji, who got really excited about a couple of things that he, that he saw. Um, you know, I I I think probably uh, saw a blend between either you know concept one and three, and I'll explain why. Um, and again, this is you know totally totally, totally biased. The, the, the netting type play structures uh, are always a tough sell, at least for, for my kids and some of our friends' kids when um, you know, they come over and we meet them at that park. Hey, Najee, I'm, I'm, I'm telling them about the park, so we'll be quiet. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the, the, the netting structure is always a little tough. I, I, you know, the other kind of play structures are really cool and I think, um, uh, they, they would certainly enjoy, uh, you know, other than that, you know, one, one and two, one and three are, are really cool. Um, I think, you know, one important feature to incorporate, at least from our point of view in, in any event is definitely the, you know, the spray pad or some, some form of the spray pad. And that's largely because and I'm sure, I'm sure the city's aware of it. I know the city's done some planning around it, but you know, Roxbury is hot um, and it gets really hot during the summer. Uh, not a ton of shade on Eustis Street and around Eustis Street. Uh, and so, um, you know, right now there's a, there's a water feature at, at, at Nabino and um, uh, my son loves it. And it's just kind of like a nice, you know, <laughs> cool down because uh, it does get pretty hot here. Um, so uh, one and three are, are really cool. Uh, 
I, I'm, I'm biased against kind of net, you know, netting type playground structures. Uh, and we are huge fans of any, any, any spray pad, whatever size or, or style, but any kind of water play um, is, uh, 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 our kids love it and, and, and secretly we, we love it too. Um, uh, that, that's, I think that's all I have to say. Oh, my son, huge fan of the spinners. Uh, if there's a way to factor that in, uh, he, he went, oh, wow, uh, when he saw the spinners. So, uh, so uh, if his, his comments count, uh, yes, they do. Yes, they definitely, do. Put a, definitely put a check yeah. under spinners. Well, that's all I have. And really cool that uh, 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 Sunja is, is, is joining us. Um, that's really, that, that, that's exciting. Uh, and, um, and we also live on Eustace Street. It's really nice to meet you, at least virtually. Thank, Thank you, you, Sammy. All right, Sunja, you got the floor. What do you think? Okay, now I I like the option three, and I'm, I'm I agree with him with the water. Any type of water pad is a plus with these kids because it is extremely hot over here. Because <laughs> I'm like right at I'm right in between Adam Street and Orchard Park Street. So I'm like right there by the park. And um, it gets really hot. But I like the idea of that big tree with the bench around the tree. I think that's really cool. See, I don't have no little ones, but I would bring my grandchildren over there. Um, and I think they would like three. I like the slide and the, the spinny thing because I had my granddaughter look at it. And she was like, oh, grandma, look at that. So I, I like option three. I don't think we would ever consider eliminating the water play um, <laughs> because we know how valuable it is. And also we try really hard not to um, exclude or dismiss something that's already in a park. So, you know, we want to make sure that we at least have the same number of swings um, if not more, we would definitely maintain the water and our, our intent is to um, take what works now and make it better. I think that's a good idea because like you said, the water, keeping the water there, because I've been here Mm, over 50 years. So I've seen the park come and go, come and go, come and go. And the kids do utilize it. And like um, the gentleman said, when he walks over there at 12 o'clock, I think that's the hardest part of the day. Yeah. What do you yeah. two feel about um, putting boulders within the water play area? Putting what? Putting boulders within the water play area. Oh, that'd be different. Yeah, not big ones, um, but just something that can be stood on or climbed or used as a table. Yeah. On the um, sorry to interrupt. On on the on the boulders, um, those are really cool. Uh, we we've gone. I think they. I think. I think you guys have something like that, or I guess maybe the Children's Museum. But at Martin Richards, we've gone there a few times, and there's like the boulders, and there's. I think there's like buttons and water will come out of the boulders. Uh, th those are fun. Um, I, I, you know, if it, if it works and it's within budget, that'd be really cool. And they don't make it become slippery. Right. We would need to choose a, a finish on them so they wouldn't be slippery. And you said the water will come out of the boulders? That would be exciting. I'll have to take a look at that. I haven't seen that. What park is that again? Martin Richards. Oh, yeah. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boulders, and I think there's like these, you know, you can activate them. There's like these little buttons. And then, you know, some of them have like waterfalls that come from the side, some spray a mist. And they all, all the boulders do like different, you know, some kind of, you know, water function. And then, you know, there's water that also just comes from the ground. Um, but it's it's really cool, this the setup there. Yeah. Yeah. They also have the saucer swing there, too. That, that big saw, but they have a really big, massive one.
Well, when, I should mention something about color selection for the play equipment. And um, I reached out to the police department and um, it turns out there are no colors that we need to avoid. We try to avoid gang colors. Um, if that's a factor, it turns out it's not a factor here. But my hope, and I would hope that Ricardo and Michael would agree with me, is the, um, you know, the colors that are used for the surrounding residences are so appealing that we could take some clues from that. Uh, yeah, I think I, I, if I recall at our first meeting, there was a notion about using, um, I think it was your, was it, Cindy, was it your, was it your mom that said the bright colors and uh, one of, one of the, one of the binos you guys said, we, we really like the, the sunny yellows and really nice, pretty bright colors. I think yeah. that was Val, Val Shelley. Val, oh, yeah, my aunt. Yeah. Okay. But my mother liked it the colors too. That's why all these houses are all these pinks and blues and yellows and. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very cheerful. Yeah, because I, I live in a blue house. My daughter lives in the pink house. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. those pinks and blues. Okay. Yeah, and the, and the other thing I'll, I'll add on the colors is, I mean, all this equipment comes in, you know, all these choices, which we, we can show. But the other thing, the, the, the surfacing we were talking about, that resilient surfacing, um, the rubberized surfacing comes also in all these colors. So you can... It can be pretty bold because right now it's very sort of brown, the mulch, the you know the, the bottom surface. But if you think about it, the whole um, you know the rug or whatever you want to call it, it, you know the I know we're looking at option one or three or three, but just and we only start to just do this as an idea. But the different sort of circles and patterns. I mean, it can be all one color, but you also you could actually have patterning in uh, the surfacing itself that complements the, the equipment colors. So I, I think, you know, once you sort of factor that in, it, it could be a very, very um, cheerful place. It could also help bring the temperature down because when poured in place rubberized surfacing was first being used, the colors weren't available and everything was black and it got really hot. So by introducing some lighter colors, um, we can cool cool the play areas down. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so it can be colorful and cool cooling. So that's good. Yeah. And then also on cooling, besides the water and the ground, um, in all of these, we've shown a few places where we not only preserve trees, but we can possibly add a couple. So Again, where there's that one dead tree, or you know, we'll look for opportunities to to even uh, increase the shade where we can. Very cool. Now, I guess here, here's another question that maybe you know the folks here can respond to, and also later on. And I just noticed this in our option three. There are five new shade trees that are kind of over here out in the park, and we didn't show them in one or two. Um, there is an existing tree, which um, is right here. But I don't know, compared to the open lawn, whether um, you know people would want more trees even in this area of the park, because it's not that hard to plant a few trees. It does use up some of the lawn space, but it over time, it would create more shade in that area. So it's a question of whether if we can find, you know, the budget allows, can we add more trees to the surrounding park? Um, I know right now on uh, uh, Du Bois Street, and I think it's, what is it, Adam Street, there's no. like fencing, uh, but open where you come into the park area. Yes. Is that, is that fencing going to stay or is that proposed to come down? So let me, um, let me get back to a picture of that. Try not to go too fast, make people dizzy. Um, oh, 
Yeah. Yeah, so this fence, right. Um, because, you know, the, the, the playground's fenced in, but you're right, there's the ornamental fence which surrounds actually the whole park. Um, you know, I think this is, uh, it's open for discussion, but I would think it's, it's not in bad shape and probably would stay, it kind of makes a nice um, boundary to the park, but I don't know, what, what do you think, Annie? I think that our dollars would be better spent um, leaving it in place. And because it is high quality and in good condition, um, I think it, you know, it elevates the park a little bit. If the, the reason I asked if, if it is staying up, um, I, you know, I, sorry, I kind of like the idea of, I mean, if, if it's possible to have those um, additional shade trees there, because uh, that area could be like a nice area to kind of like, you know, put a blanket out, picnic, whatever. But if the fence comes down, then you worry about kids like running out into the street. But exactly. if the fence is there and there are shade Mom, trees, that could be, yeah, sorry, uh, that could be some good uh, wow, like, wow, uh, wow, uh, wow. picnic space. Sorry, I'm going to go on mute now. Yeah. Time to go to the playground. Um, so yeah, so we were talking about is one of those trees could be right, right in this corner here at the entrance and again, throw shade um, on the lawn beyond it. Um, you know, it's, so that's, um, yeah, thank you for sort of reminding us of the fences here as well. And here's here's some of our colors. Um, yep, the yellow. Again, you know, it, it's it's not that, you know, it, it it comes off as very bright and cheerful, but you know, we've got two different shades of yellow and a lighter gray and some blues and, um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, things we could sort of pick up on that would be nice. Uh, I I was wondering, did, does um. What do you what do folks think about the mounds the the rock you know the kind of little mini mounds was that in skiing too I'm, try, I'm trying to remember yeah I mean the photo was something like this this is again a little more extreme. exaggerated I think go to that other image but but the idea is to have you know because the surfacing can be molded over topography or you know hills so something that you know, as small, as small as like, you know, we're talking about kids climbing on boulders, but this could be something that was, you know, maybe four or five feet across and a few feet tall to maybe um, three or four feet tall and maybe six or seven feet across, you know, um, not, not huge, but sort of fun to run up and down without sort of creating a, um, you know, a hiding place or something. Yeah, you had an image with the play. What was the one with the water? feature that had a, a kind of a yeah. so that that was a good that one right there this sort of yeah. small but kind of fun yeah more of that kind of scale i think um uh, and then the other piece did anybody have any strong preferences in terms of the benches uh the seating around the tree seems to be popular right Sonja and uh, benches, tables, anything in particular that was any other? Was the shade structure, uh, was that something that people found appealing? Yes, that was different. I, I like that shade structure. That's a really nice one actually. We also thought that placing the cafe tables along, is it Keegan Street? Um, and having them be kind of out in the open meant that they'd be very visible to the surrounding neighborhood and um, harder to misbehave in that location. So are there other comments that you'd like to add? 
and remember that you can always reach out to me if you think of anything, um, if you think of anything else. I'm pretty easy to find. And um, so our next steps are, we'll take these comments, as we said, and um, incorporate them into a preferred option. Um, and then ask for your comments on that at our third community meeting, which will happen probably in September. Um, I had hoped it would be at the beginning of September, it turns out that I've been called for federal jury duty for three weeks in August. And I don't know how much um, time I'll actually have to spend in the courthouse, but I just can't count on being available as much. I'll be checking um, email and voicemail, um, but not during the day. So if nobody has anything else, again, I wanna thank you so much for your insights. And Sammy, this is the time of day that my mom used to call the arsenic hour. So we especially appreciate you and your children having patience with this process. Great characterization of it. Yeah, no, yeah. Thank you. this is really cool. And uh, we're very thankful for the opportunity to participate. Well, we hope to see all of you at the third meeting and Sunja, I hope that um, you'll feel free to contact me and um, encourage Val and Charmaine and Lisa to take a look at the recording of this on the website. So thank you all. Yeah, well. will. And I also want to thank Liz Sullivan for um, shepherding us through this. We really appreciate her time. My pleasure. So thank you. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.